See, we have already seen that if you excessively rely on GNP per capita as an indicator of development, there are going to be problems, right? Because there can be some countries which might have very high GNP per capita, but they can also have very low human development. And there can be few countries which might have low GNP per capita, but they might have very high uh, uh, human development, right? Although having said that, high GNP per capita is also related with, to a certain extent, with high human development. But the point which you want to make is that excessive reliance on GNP per capita as the development indicator is, is dangerous, right? Because uh, a relatively prosperous country can also can also be lacking in terms of various development indicators like uh, safe drinking water, like literacy, right, like uh, proper health and sanitation. Uh, so all those things. So having said that, we need an index of human development. An index of human development. An index of human development. So HDI actually puts uh, uh, three main indicators. That is your indicator of life expectancy, education and per capita income together. And it constitutes an index. Uh, so it put various words various socioeconomic indicators indicators into one index into one index and what is that index um, what are the different indicators one is life expectancy One is life expectancy. So um, if you have good life expectancy, then it is indirectly going to reflect that you have lower child mortality and lower uh, infant mortality, right? So although it is not taking uh, child mortality, infant mortality, but life expectancy itself is a weak indicator of uh, 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 child mortality and infant mortality, right? Second, is education so education itself is coming from two kinds of indicators one is uh, adult literacy adult literacy and the another one is Enrollment rate, enrollment rates for primary secondary and tertiary. Education right? or higher education, whatever. So you have a, a two by three weight of adult literacy and one by three weight of uh, enrollment rates. And the third one is per capita income. Of course, I mean, having uh, said that that per capita income is not a good indicator but you still cannot neglect it that is not possible so you have three indicators of human development you have three indicators of human development so and what uh, what happens is that you give equal weight to all these three i will make some detailed <clears throat> recording later about hdi uh, that uh, their computation but right now, as it is given in the chapter, we are looking at uh, that thing. Right. Um, so HDI is calculated by defining some notion of uh, country's achievements. 
in terms of all of these three indicators, in terms of life expectancy, education, per capita income, uh, and then you take the simple average of all of them. So what you do is uh, whatever is the life expectancy plus education plus this, whatever values you're getting divided by three is what your HDR is. The main, <clears throat> the main advantage of HDI is its simplicity. The main advantage of HDI is its simplicity, right? So HDI sort of creates a kind of, an, um, it, it, it gives a value to each country, which is going to be lying between zero to one. Zero is the worst case, one is the, uh, one is the best. So HDI, creates for each country a final number that takes the value between zero and one that takes the value between zero and one, right? But you also have to understand one thing I've just told you, uh, just a bit, you cannot even neglect per capita income because there is some relation between per capita income and development. So you look at, uh, uh, it, it is, it could be argued also that with rising income levels, you have an access. I mean, you have resources that you can have better schools. You have resources that you have uh, uh, better hospitals. You have resources that uh, you can you can use those resources for the welfare programs, and hence the development is going to going to be better. Development is going to increase. Uh, so, if not the excessive reliance, but you still have to give some weightage to the per capita income. You just cannot deny that per capita income. <clears throat> income still acts as a fairly good proxy for most aspects of development, right? It can be argued that rising income levels ultimately and inevitably translates into better nutritional and educational standards to better nutritional and educational standards, right? Uh, so 
and the relationship between <clears throat> the per capita income and the life expectancy is also fairly strong right so in those nations in which you have uh, uh, high per capita income life expectancy also tend to be higher uh, the relationship between per capita income and uh, education levels, the, the, the relationship between per capita income and lower infant mortality, all of that is very high. So you can't just neglect it. That is one thing. <clears throat> Some structural characteristics. Characteristics of developing countries, some structural characteristics of developing countries, right? So what could, the, <clears throat> what could these be? One is demographic characteristics. One is demographic characteristics. Right. So in case of demographic characteristics, what is happening is uh, that most of these uh, developing countries, right, uh, they are characterized by very high birth rate and high death rates. Uh, and uh, as the development is going to go, I mean, as, as the development is going to proceed, you will find this that the death rate will start falling and the birth rate is going to is going to start falling after uh, some time right uh, so what happens is that uh, birth rate is still high and death rate will start falling early so there is a population explosion which happens uh, so these developing countries <clears throat> they are characterized by high birth rates and high death rates, right? Right. Then with development, death rate falls quickly. And later, birth rate starts falling right so there is a gap which is going to be created between high birth uh, high birth rate and low death rate this results in population explosion or you can say high population growth This results in population explosion or high population growth. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. So other is your uh, occupational and uh, this structure, production structure. This you already know. I think we have talked about this uh, earlier too, that, uh, that uh, agricultural is, agricultural activity is the main occupation. And uh, the the ex the the production is also revolving around mainly that so occupational structure occupational structure agriculture Right. Then rural and urban migration.
rural and urban migration like uh, if you look at these uh, these developing countries you'll find this that uh, these developing countries they are characterized by very high rates of rural and urban migration so whatever new rural labor non uh, rural labor force is there uh, that is also characterized in certain kinds of services non rural labor force means urban labor force they are also characterized in so-called services. Now, these services could be very low-quality services, for example. Um, I mean, very and they, these services would also require very really low setup uh, costs. Uh, so, what is uh, what is happening in the developing countries is that these developing countries are characterized by very high rates of urbanization, also, and an urban overcrowding because of rural urban migration, right? Because of rural urban migration, this also happens. So one thing which is going to happen there is that uh, the rates of rural urban migration right, are very high. Right. And uh, there is a huge non rural labor force, and it is engaged in uh, very nebulous activities for services. Right. So many of these rural labor force, uh, uh, when uh, when they come to urban areas, so that is now the non-rural labor force, and that is engaged in very petty petty activities, right? Uh, for example, housemates. For example, uh, any any kind of activity which is going to require a very low setup cost, right? Uh, so what happens is that. So in developing countries, there is going to be an overcrowding in the urban areas. So all of this leads to the overcrowding in urban areas. This is also the characteristic. A good development indicator would be that wherever you are, the development is such that you do not have to unnecessarily migrate. You are getting good work opportunities around your home only. But the people from different states, they have to come to the urban areas and they have to do these petty jobs, right? Although they are getting much more, they may be getting much more than what they could, than what they would have got at home. But still, right? The idea should be that we should be able to develop uh, the rural area is such that people can get respectable jobs there only. But we are just talking about the characteristics, so overcrowding in urban areas. Then you have patterns of international trade. patterns of international trade, right? So most of these developing countries, they are mainly the exporters of the agricultural products, right? Uh, so, and this, this pattern is mostly in all the agricultural countries. So the, the, uh, the pattern is that uh, these developing, uh, sorry, developing countries, so developing countries, They are mainly exporting
agricultural products mainly right and uh, and their exporting of primary products their exporting of agricultural product is also given by comparative advantage theory because they have the comparative advantage in in agriculture so that is the reason they will be doing this so but as far as imports are concerned their import pattern is more or less same as the other developed countries but import pattern right uh, but import pattern kind of the products which they are importing so they are almost same as the other developed countries import pattern is similar is similar to developed countries. Achha, one problem which comes with the exporting of agricultural products is that uh, the terms of trade, they are going to fluctuate. So because uh, agricultural products can have the fluctuating prices and hence their export revenues will be fluctuating, these developing countries, which are mainly dependent upon exporting the agricultural products or primary products. So that also is the problem, right? So I think this more or less concludes our chapter two of the Vrajray. So I hope you found this uh, part of the series a little useful to you. Right. Thank you, Bata.